Hello my friends and welcome back to the WOW Machine Channel. The billet manufacturing process begins with melting steel scrap, typically using an induction melting furnace such as the Electrotherm 4000 kW 10-ton DTI model equipped with DIFOC, digital inverter technology through fiber optic communication. This advanced furnace utilizes medium frequency power supplies ranging from 5 kW to 40,000 kW and frequencies from 100 Hz to 10,000 Hz, offering robust design and high efficiency. The inverter design, protected by breakover diodes and supported by efficient DC reactors, ensures high inverter efficiency and system safety. The DIFOC technology enhances power supply performance, providing rapid electronic tripping for short circuit protection, thus minimizing downtime. This technology, adopted by numerous steel plants worldwide, facilitates easier maintenance due to its compact yet spacious design. As steel scrap is melted within this system, it forms a homogeneous molten steel bath, essential for producing high-quality billets. The DIFOC technology is known for its reliability, making it a preferred choice in modern melt shops. After melting, the molten steel is transferred to the casting stage, where it is formed into billets using a high-speed modular caster. This caster is particularly suitable for producing billets of 80 to 160 mm square sections. Modular in design, it allows for easy installation and expansion without major infrastructure changes, making it ideal for mini steel plants. The process involves a rigid dummy bar for quick re-stranding, a motorized tundish trolley for easy tundish changes, and a PLC-based secondary spray cooling system to minimize scale formation. Forced mold lubrication ensures controlled oil flow, contributing to the efficient and safe production of billets. Steel coil manufacturing process begins with liquid hot metal being transported from the blast furnace to the steelmaking facility in torpedoes. This hot metal contains impurities such as carbon, silicon, phosphorus, and sulfur, which must be removed to produce high-quality steel. The first step in impurity removal occurs at the desulfurization station, where lime and magnesium powder are injected into the hot metal to eliminate sulfur. The process is controlled online by a mathematical model that adjusts according to the input chemistry of the liquid metal. The sulfur is absorbed into the slag, which is then skimmed off using an infrared sensor-operated raking boom, minimizing metal loss. Subsequently, the desulfurized hot metal, along with scrap, is charged into a basic oxygen furnace BOF, vessel. Here. High-pressure oxygen is blown through lances at supersonic speeds to oxidize the remaining impurities. Additional materials such as iron ore, lime, and other fluxes are introduced into the vessel, with the process controlled by a thermodynamic model equipped with adaptive self-learning capabilities. A smart lance system, using audiometer technology, adjusts the lance height according to the slag condition inside the vessel, preventing slopping. Once the impurities are oxidized, the liquid steel is transferred to a steel ladle and subjected to further refining processes. At the online purging station, argon gas is used to homogenize the steel's composition. The steel is then sent to the ladle furnace station, where additional ferroalloys are added to achieve precise chemical composition. The temperature of the steel is carefully controlled using a mathematical superheat model, ensuring that it remains within the desired range. The next stage is thin slab casting, 
where the liquid steel is poured into a tundish, and from there, it flows into a water-cooled copper mold. As the steel passes through the mold, it begins to solidify, forming a thin shell. The solidified steel shell is then passed through segment rolls and directly cooled into slabs of varying thickness and width. These slabs are reheated in tunnel furnaces before being rolled into the desired strip thickness using multiple rolling stands. The rolling mill is equipped with advanced control systems that ensure precise thickness and shape of the final strip. After rolling, the steel strips undergo laminar cooling, where the cooling rate is controlled to achieve the desired mechanical properties. The final step involves inspection and packing, where the coils are checked for surface defects and packed using fully automated machines. The manufacturing of hot dip galvanized HDG, coated coils and paint-coated coils involves multiple stages, each designed to enhance the durability, corrosion resistance, and aesthetic appeal of steel coils. Hot dip galvanized coated coil. The process begins with a steel coil that undergoes surface preparation, typically involving cleaning with alkali solutions, pickling in acid to remove oxides, and then fluxing to ensure good adhesion of the zinc coating. The prepared steel is then passed through a molten zinc bath at around 450 degrees Celsius, 842 degrees Fahrenheit. As the steel exits the bath, it carries a layer of zinc, which forms a strong metallurgical bond with the steel surface. This zinc layer serves as a protective barrier against corrosion. The thickness of the zinc coating can be controlled by adjusting the speed at which the steel is withdrawn from the bath and by air knives that blow off excess zinc. After galvanizing, the coil may be subjected to temper rolling to improve surface finish and mechanical properties. The final product is coiled for shipping or further processing. Paint-coated coil. In the case of paint-coated coils, the process usually starts with a galvanized or aluminized steel coil to enhance corrosion resistance. The steel coil is cleaned and pre-treated to ensure good adhesion of the paint. It is then passed through a coating line where it receives multiple layers of paint, typically a primer followed by a top coat. The paint is applied using rollers, and each layer is cured in an oven to achieve the desired hardness and durability. The choice of paint depends on the intended application and can include polyester, PVDF, or epoxy. The coil is then cooled, inspected for quality, and recoiled for shipment. A color-coded steel roof tile making machine is a highly specialized piece of equipment used in the production of roofing tiles made from pre-painted galvanized steel. The process begins with feeding coils of color-coded steel into the machine. These coils typically have a thickness ranging from 0.3 to 0.8 mm and a width of about 1,200 mm. The machine then unrolls the steel and flattens it through a series of rollers, ensuring the sheet is perfectly level before it moves on to the next stage. The flattened sheet is then passed through a roll-forming section where a series of precisely engineered rollers shape the steel into the desired tile profile. This process is crucial, as it not only forms the distinctive contours of the roofing tile but also enhances the strength and rigidity of the material. After the roll forming, the sheet is cut to the required length using a hydraulic cutting system, ensuring clean and accurate cuts. Following this, some machines include an embossing section, which can add patterns or textures to the surface of the tiles, 
providing both aesthetic appeal and increased surface area, which can help in the adhesion of paint and other coatings. Finally, the finished tiles are collected and stacked automatically, ready for packaging and shipment. Color-coded steel roof tiles play a significant role in modern construction due to their durability, aesthetic appeal, and energy efficiency. These tiles are typically coated with a layer of zinc or aluminum zinc alloy to prevent rust and corrosion, followed by multiple layers of paint that not only add color but also provide additional protection against environmental factors. Color-coded steel roof tiles can last up to 50 years with proper maintenance, which is significantly longer than traditional asphalt shingles, which typically last 20 to 30 years. The steel itself is lightweight, often weighing between 5 to 10 kilograms per square meter, which reduces the structural load on buildings and makes it easier to transport and install. The energy efficiency of color-coded steel tiles is another critical advantage. They can reflect up to 70% of solar radiation, reducing the heat absorption by the building and leading to a 10 to 15% reduction in cooling costs. Additionally, these tiles can support solar panel installations, further contributing to energy savings. The T-Profile Forming Machine is a specialized piece of equipment designed to manufacture T-shaped profiles from metal sheets. The process begins with feeding metal strips or sheets into the machine. The material is first straightened to ensure it is flat and free from any bends or irregularities. Once straightened, the metal moves through a series of roll-forming stations where it undergoes sequential bending. These rolls are precisely shaped to gradually form the T-profile, with the vertical and horizontal flanges taking shape as the material progresses through the machine. The machine applies controlled pressure to ensure the metal conforms exactly to the desired T-profile dimensions. It can accommodate different sizes and thicknesses of material, depending on the specific requirements of the production run. After the profile is formed, it may pass through additional processes such as cutting to length, punching holes, or adding any necessary features specific to the final application of the T-profile. The machine operates with high precision to ensure consistent quality in the final product, and it can be adjusted to produce various sizes of T-profiles. Finally, the finished T profiles are collected and prepared for packaging or further processing. This machine is crucial in industries where T shaped metal profiles are used, such as construction, automotive, or manufacturing of structural components.
Caltech's fully automatic ring rolling machine is designed for precision and efficiency in the production of rings. The process begins with loading the preformed blank into the machine. Once the blank is positioned, the machine initiates the approaching phase, where the main roll moves towards the blank, preparing it for deformation. This stage ensures the material is correctly aligned for the rolling process. In the rolling phase, the main roll and the mandrel work in tandem to deform the blank into the desired ring shape. The machine applies consistent pressure and control, gradually expanding the blank's diameter while reducing its cross-sectional area. This precise control is essential for achieving uniformity in the ring's dimensions and mechanical properties. The machine's advanced automation ensures that each step is carried out with exact timing and force, resulting in a consistently high-quality product. After the rolling is complete, the machine enters the return phase, where the rolls move back to their original positions, allowing the finished ring to be unloaded. Caltech's ring rolling machine is engineered for simplicity and reliability, reducing the need for manual adjustments or interventions. The fully automatic process is initiated with a single start button, streamlining the entire operation. This automation not only enhances productivity but also minimizes errors, making it ideal for industries that require precise and consistent ring production.